One of the biggest questions I had when I was getting into 3D printing, whether it be resin or FDM, how long do they last? What is the longevity of a 3D printer and how much is it gonna cost me to keep it going? Well, after five machines and three years, I may have an answer for you guys. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna be talking about the longevity of 3D printers. As you can see, I got five of them behind me, two of them are resin, and three of them are FDM. Now, I've been 3D printing for a little over three years now. I started back in 2019. I have created a lot of different things with 3D printing. You can see, I've done everything from helmets, to Terminator arms, to little collectible figures, everyday use things, to hang things, to pulley systems, you name it, I have 3D printed it. So it's been a very fun journey when it comes to 3D printing. And yes, I'm one of those crazy people that keep track of the number of prints that they did. So for three years, I've been keeping track of every print that I did on these machines. One of the biggest questions I had when I got into 3D printing was, how long are these machines going to last? And what is it gonna cost me to keep them up and running? On this episode, I'm gonna go through each one of my machines, tell you how many prints is on them, what broke, and how much it costs to fix them. So you can get an idea of what the longevity of a printer is and what the price it is to keep them going. All right, let's start with the first printer I got, which was a resin 3D printer called the Elegoo Mars. Now, if you don't know the difference between an FDM printer or a resin 3D printer, take a look at this video right here. I tell you the difference between the two printers and what are the pros and cons of those printers. On this printer, I have 201 prints done on this 3D printer. Now the biggest problem with this machine is this. This is the vat and there's a plastic sheet underneath here that goes bad. It's called an FEP release film liner. So that's, that's what that is. If you don't know how the printer works, basically this is where the liquid resin goes and there's a plunger that comes down. They shoot a light underneath here and it peels it off this and it's constantly getting worn out. So and again, if you check out my video, it goes into more detail. That's as tight as a drum, that's the part that goes bad. And it goes bad quite often. I had to fix it at 53 prints, and then again at 105 prints, and then again at 148 prints, and again at 168, which that last one was my fault. I dropped a scissor through the stupid thing, but it's almost time to change it out again. You figure every 50 prints, and these films cost you anywhere from 250 a sheet to seven dollars a sheet but that's what they look like and they come in this nice little packaging this was a five piece and I think this cost me about 20 bucks to change the FEP filament there's a lot of screws there's a lot of tension you can mess it up in the beginning it used to take me like a half hour now I could probably get it done in 10 minutes got pretty quick at it and you kind of know what you're doing you're gonna wear gloves because there's gonna be liquid and stuff underneath there can be a little frustrating another thing I had to change at 142 prints was the LCD screen for this 3D printer. I had to change it out once, but I actually did it more than once because I thought there was a problem. You can see that video here. Cheeto Systems sent this to me and asked if I would do a review on it. But just to show you what the LCD screens look like, these are the older ones. I took out this one still works and there's a one little connection. It is a little bit of a pain in the butt to change out. You have to take the whole machine apart and you have to be very careful, but it's pretty straightforward. And these go around 50 bucks. So anywhere from, you know, give or take five or ten dollars. Yeah, Cheeto Systems systems reach out for me with this and I changed this out at 179 prints. I didn't need to, so so far out of 200 prints I only had to change the LCD screen one time. You also have to do a firmware update on these as well because they changed the file system of Chido Systems, which was a little bit of frustrating thing and I have a video for that as well, which shows you step by step on how to change the firmware on it. And it's actually pretty simple. You just use a USB stick and you'll put that file on there and you connect the machine, turn it on, turn it off, that type of thing. So it's not super involved. Now this printer right here is a giant resin printer. As you can see, that's fairly new, it's very new. It's called the Zwat. It's Z W H T. I don't I don't know how to say that, but anyway, that is the machine. I did a review on it. You can take a look at that right here, or if I'm running out of space, you can take a look at it down there in the description. I only have about eight prints on this, but it does a massive 
size of prints. That's why I've only done eight because it's really big and this is the size of, well, you can go bigger than this, but this is the size that I printed out all in one piece. That's a Hulk that I did and I printed them out one shot and obviously I painted him. Really good machine. I actually show that being printed. I've painted it since then. The FPT sheets on that are pretty expensive. They're anywhere from seven to twenty dollars depending on it because it's, it's way bigger than that a lot bigger so yeah it is a little more pricey and to change that screen out you're looking at anywhere from 150 to 200 dollars so bigger isn't always better you know when you're starting off but the machine I got really inexpensive it's actually a copy of another company's machine and you'll see that a lot in this video one major manufacturer comes out with a great machine and then a whole bunch of other companies start copying it so and you can get them usually pretty much cheaper and sometimes it's the same quality and sometimes it's a little bit better so don't always be fooled by that I always recommend going with the name brand because there's more forms out there for you to research and figure out what's wrong with the printer there's gonna be something wrong with the printer this is a hobby type of thing something's gonna go wrong with the machine and you want the reference material so yeah I do recommend name brands but once you get familiar with one name brand you can move off to some of the off name brands plus you get more support with the name brand now let's go on to the FDM printers that's these printers right here now the way I kept track of these prints some of the counts of the prints were a half hour and some of them could have been up to two days but I just put them as one print there's quite a few hundred hours on each one of these machines they're kind of all the same type of structures they have little differences here and there but they're mainly all stock there's little tweaks here and there that I did and I'll go through that as we go through the printers. Let's start with the first one, which is the Focus. That one was actually sent to me for free by Focus. I appreciate them doing that. And that is my newest FDM printer. It has a lot of great features. One of the major features is what they call a direct drive. You can see the review here. Pretty much take out this Bowden tube. There's a tube that goes across and goes in, but it has cool features like that. Heated bed, run out sensor, stuff like that. You can see the review. I don't want to get too much into that. And on my channel you know I'm painfully honest even though I've got this printer for free I did run into quite a bit of problems with it it was an awesome printer for the first 80 prints and I highly recommended it I had quite a few problems with trying to get this bed leveled I did quite a few videos on it to try and help out the people that I recommended this printer to and the several videos that I did as my journey to try to get this back and up and working so at 80 prints I had to figure out why it wasn't leveling anymore I changed out the bed that didn't work I changed out the wheels it got better but in the end it was a piece of tin foil in the middle to raise the bed up because I guess it was warped or something was off on it I, I still don't understand it but I got it up and running and it's printing great and sometimes with these FDM printers it, maybe it was shipped weird maybe they didn't use the best parts something might be off and you have to troubleshoot them and unfortunately you can spend days weeks trying to fix the problem for over a month trying to figure out what was wrong with it and that's kind of the game when it comes to 3d printing if you run into something like this and you can't return the machine then you have to try to problem solve it and figure it out and you go on forums and you find people like me that are going through the same thing and they put a video out there and they show you how to fix it so it's kind of part of the hobby unfortunately but being my newest machine I have about 205 prints done on this machine so far everything's running fine now like I said the first 80 it was all awesome and then I went through that hiccup and had to play games with it and then I went on from there and it's been printing pretty flawlessly since I fixed it. Now let's move on to my tried and true Ender 3 and you can see that's right here. The only upgrade that I did to the Ender 3 was I added a glass bed and not a hard thing to do. You could just buy a glass bed. They sell them. The thing I love about this the most is there is a ton of parts for this because of this brand name. You can find Ender 3 parts all day long on Amazon. And that's a great thing about buying a name brand printer. Now being that this is my first FDM printer and you can see the video of my journey when I got the first FDM printer I ever got. It was really cool. It was a little scary learning how to do everything but so well worth it. I have 607 prints done on this machine. Yes. 
that many prints. I had to fix the fan on this and you can see my not so great job on it. And I have the video on how I did that here as well. I had to fix that at 371 prints. So after 371 prints, not that bad. I mean, I've printed helmets on the thing. So, you know, these take a long time to print. So just to give you an idea. The fan will cost you anywhere from like five bucks, but you usually cheaper to buy them in a kit. So I think I've paid $20 and I got the side fan and the front fan, very inexpensive. And I did a quick way to fix it instead of running the wire all the way through. I just cut it off right there and connected the wires that way. Cause I know I'm gonna have, probably have to do that again. I did have to change the nozzle. Again, not a hard process. You gotta heat it up to take it off. That was done at 267 prints. One of the biggest reasons I had to do that is because I was messing around with different material. You know, not all of this was PLA that I was printing in. Some of it I was messing around with PETG, some TPU, which is rubber, some wood filaments, and that tends to wear down that nozzle quite a bit. When you change the nozzle, you also have to change out this rubber housing that's around the nozzle, and unfortunately it heats up and, and kind of wraps itself around it, and the only way to get it off is to peel it off and you wind up destroying it, so you will have to change out the rubber every time you change the nozzle. The rubber housing could be anywhere from $1.50 to $5 a piece, depending on where you get them. I just saw them, I think it was $10 for five, something like that on Amazon, and I'll put a picture of it right here for you. Very inexpensive. The nozzles can be anywhere from 50 cents to $2. You can go quite crazy with nozzles if you want to get higher end, like Ruby and stuff like that. You can spend $80 on those, but I don't do anything like that. I use cheap and expensive nozzles, and I've never had a problem with the cheapo ones. Right now, at the time of filming this, I did put a 0 0.06 millimeter nozzle on this because I wanted to try bigger prints and see if it'll speed up the process and I may do a video on that and I did change out that nozzle at 577 prints so you figure about every 300 prints you're gonna have to change out the nozzle depending on how big the print is and that's why it probably averages out around that and I did have one other problem I did chip the glass bed on this and I did that when I was peeling off one of my models that happened at 606 prints you know it's not the the worst thing in the world. They were about $10 for the glass beds, 10 to $20. I got mine for 10. Where it's at isn't a problem right now, but I could see doing bigger prints that could be a problem. Now, last but not least is my Disway. And this is actually an Ender 3 clone. It's just some random company that said, oh, I'm gonna make a clone of an Ender 3. The reason why I bought it is I got it on a really sick deal. I paid almost $200 for the original Ender, and this one was only like 130. And the reason why I wanted another print is because I kept having this one printing and then there was other stuff I wanted to print. You know, while that one's going, I could get something else started on this one. And so I could kind of go back and forth. There's times where you're making a helmet or you're doing something and you can print multiple parts at the same time. It has 348 prints on it so far. I print quite a bit on it just like the Ender. I had to change the nozzle and the rubber piece once again at 207 prints. Again, I did upgrade the bed on this and I haven't had a problem with the bed like that one chipping, but this one's at a very lower amount of prints. So that's my five 3D printers and the experience that I had and the expense that I had to incur on fixing them and getting stuff going. So if you're getting into 3D printing and you wanna know what is gonna be the expense, is this gonna be an expensive hobby, really to keep them up, the biggest expense is probably going to be your time and that's just the way it is with this hobby period is you know spending the time to learn what to do and what to fix and even just setting up prints just learning pretty big learning curve when it comes to 3d printing and if you're not interested in it probably not gonna stick with it. Anybody that asks me, what's the best 3D printer to go with? I always recommend an Ender 3. Not that it's the best, they're inexpensive, and there are tons and tons of people out there with experience to share with you to figure out problems that are gonna happen. There's gonna be a problem why something isn't printing. So, you know, when you buy an off-name one, you run the risk of not getting firmware updates or not getting information that you need, you know, because there's not that many people that use that printer. You can't find a solution for it. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this video helped you in any way. And ring that bell if you want to get notified when I make a video. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys.
This isn't a Marvel movie, guys. There's no secret ending, no strategy or something. Just hit like and subscribe and maybe click on one of the videos above. Don't know what to tell you.